It's an important and a complex subject. They're talking about big projects and big sums of money. They're still talking, still working, still negotiating in good faith across the aisle. But these discussions have yet to conclude. There's no outcome yet, no bipartisan agreement, no text, nothing for the Congressional Budget Office to evaluate, and certainly nothing on which to vote. Not yet. So obviously, if the Democratic leader tries to force a cloture vote on a bill that does not exist, it will fail. Around here, we typically write the bills before we vote on them. That's the custom. Of course, here in the Senate, a failed cloture vote does not mean no forever. In the middle of the early COVID crisis back in March of 2020, with Americans under stay-home orders and financial markets plummeting, Senate Democrats withheld cloture from the CARES Act multiple times so they could continue haggling behind the scenes. Now, this was during a real emergency. Every day, every hour was crucial. But Senate Democrats blocked cloture multiple times until various details were fine-tuned to their liking. Here's what the Democratic leader said while his side tanked those cloture votes last March, uh, March of 2020. The majority leader was well aware of how this vote would go before it happened. But he chose to move forward with it anyway, even though negotiations are continuing. So who's playing games? That was the Democratic leader in March of 2020 in the middle of a national emergency. That, of course, was a fast-moving global crisis with bipartisan text already in hand. There was a bill. Yet Senate Democrats insisted on taking their time in the middle of this national 100-year pandemic. Now, we're talking about long-term infrastructure investments that will pay out over many years, but he wants to vote before any agreement even exists. So this stunt is set to fail. The Democratic leader will be free to change his vote and move to reconsider whenever a bipartisan product actually exists. Now, on another matter, President Biden campaigned on a pledge not to raise income taxes on the vast majority of Americans. But the latest <clears throat> reckless taxing and spending spree that Democrats are cooking up would crush our country with a historic set of sweeping tax hikes. Here's one of the targets in the crosshairs, family farms. It appears our colleagues' plan will eliminate tax rules that allow family property to be passed down to the next generation without facing a new devastating tax burden. Without the fix in question, the so-called stepped-up basis for capital gains taxes, scores of family businesses across America will feel a massive squeeze. In states like mine, family farms drive the rural economy. But as I've heard from many of my state's family farmers, <clears throat> it's operations like theirs <clears throat> that are especially, especially at risk. One Kentucky farmer said his family has worked the same land in Muhlenberg County for 150 years. He had hoped, hoped, to one day pass his property along to his children just like it was passed along to him. But after generations spent improving and investing in the same farm, he's worried it would, could all be gone in the blink of an eye. Another Kentuckian described how her family, like many farmers, is asset rich, but cash poor. If the stepped up basis is eliminated, her family could lose the home, barns, machinery, and fields that have been their life's work. The Farm Bureau in my state warned that what Washington Democrats are trying to do 
would penalize farmers for wanting, for wanting to continue a tradition which we all depend on. If the stepped up basis is eliminated, generations of accumulated work would be ripped, literally ripped from the hands of America's farm families. Family farming in the Commonwealth isn't just a way of life, it's actually considered a birthright. But if Democrats voice this bill for their reckless taxing and spending spree on rural America, a lot of this heritage could be literally ripped out of families' hands and put on the auction block. And who'll gobble it up by then? Who'll buy this land? One recent report suggested that one of the biggest bidders for America family farmland these days is actually the Chinese. Later today, Ranking Member Bozeman and some of our colleagues on the Agriculture Committee will be coming to the floor to sound the alarm about the ways that Democrats' reckless tax and spend spree could threaten farm families and rural America. Mr. President, death should not be a taxable event. The family farms that help feed us deserve our support, not sabotage from Washington. 